All right, good evening, everyone. Je vais parler en anglais parce que mon français n'est pas très bien. Um, I'm delighted to be here, and I thank you all kindly um, for having me. And I was invited to share with you all my vision for a zero poverty world and how to achieve it. As we're all aware, eradicating poverty remains the greatest global challenge of our time. It is, after all, the first sustainable development goal to end poverty in all forms everywhere. There is no question that while poverty remains a huge global challenge, there's been tremendous progress made in the last few decades. The global poverty rate has been halved since 2000. And while I won't bore you with numbers and statistics, I'd like to highlight a few. For example, in 2013, an estimated 767 million people lived below the poverty line. That's 767 million people living on less than $2 a day. And that number was down from 1.7 billion people in 1999. That figure reflects a decrease in the global poverty rate from 28% in 1999 to 11% in 2013. The most significant progress, as we all may guess, was seen in Eastern and Southeastern Asia, where the rate declined from 35% in 1999 to just 3% in 2013. That is tremendous progress. However, there is one region in the world that lags behind and has not quite caught up to these advancements. And that is Sub-Saharan Africa, where I'm from, where 42% of people continued to live in extreme poverty in 2013. In my own country of, of Liberia, West Africa, the poverty rate today stands at 54%. Liberia ranks 174 out of 187 on the United Nations Development Index and remains one of the poorest countries in the world today. Liberia is food poor, energy poor, lacks infrastructure, has a broken healthcare system, broken education system, and very little access to clean water and sanitation facilities. Liberia is the poster child for poverty. But it is not all bad news in my country. Despite a decade-long civil war that led to its current conditions, the country has experienced strong democracy that has led to two democratic elections, relative peace, and improved governance, which has paved the way for investments and development. Liberia's brutal civil war took the lives of hundreds of thousands of people and displaced millions. I myself was a product of this war. I was a refugee for 20 years. The war tore apart the country's entire infrastructure, from roads to school buildings, farms, factories, everything was destroyed. My own family was forced to flee the devastation when I was just eight years old. I lived outside of Liberia for 20 years before returning in 2008. When I returned, I saw a country ravaged by poverty. I saw the impact that poverty has on people's lives. And I saw unnecessary deaths on a daily basis caused by hunger, caused by contaminated water. And I was motivated to do something about it. What I saw that was even more depressing was water poverty. Water poverty being one of the major barriers to development. It's an issue that affects 700 million people globally, especially 
women and children who bear the burden of walking long distances to collect water. Women on average spend six hours every single day walking to collect water. That translates to 40 billion hours a year on the African continent alone. 3.4 million people die globally of water-related illnesses. That, to me, is poverty. I started Face Africa to address this very issue, the issue of water poverty. Since 2010, we've been able to reach over 120,000 people through our programs, giving them the opportunity to prosper and live healthier, more productive lives. And this is the effort of myself and a group of young, committed Liberians who saw a problem and decided to do something about it. Young, committed Liberians who are passionate about improving the lives of men, women, and children in their communities. During Ebola, when the Ebola outbreak um, hit Liberia, we were actively working in communities to make sure that the, that the disease did not spread further. So while this is just a, a drop in the bucket, no pun intended, I am hopeful. I am hopeful that with collective efforts, each and every single one of us in this room, as individuals, in this global village, can do our part, as I'm doing. That with collaborative efforts, with shared commitment to a zero poverty world, we can realize this vision in our lifetime. So I leave you with the same question that I was asked today by the forum. What is your vision for a zero poverty world? And how are you playing your part to achieve it? Because ultimately, it takes each and every one of us to pull together our resources, our collective resources, our collective skills and talents, efforts, and even voices for those of us who feel we don't have something tangible to give. And if we do this, we can realize an equitable world where every single person has the chance to prosper. Thank you. Thank you.